Hey Gloomers, welcome back to Nerdhaven. My name is Mike and today we're going to be looking at all my 3D printed floor tiles, walls, and doors. All right, so let's jump right into it. So I'm really excited to share this. This was the first upgrade that we did to our game when we first started playing. And uh, this was before I had a 3D printer. So I actually ordered these from Etsy. Uh, they were printed and shipped over to me and I painted them. Um, but this is, again, this is the only thing that I didn't really print myself of all the 3D printed things that I have. And um, these are based off of Nestor's design. Uh, he, if you go to Thingiverse, and I'll have links below if you wanted to check them out or print them for yourself. Uh, but Nestor has a system set up where um, all the frames, there's actually these uh, like honeycomb shape frames that you, you print out. And these sort of act as the model for all the different shaped rooms. And then all of the tiles actually just fit into them. And you pick the tile based off whatever, whatever texture um, or theme you know, the, the map calls for. I actually find this to work better than the normal tile set. Not only is it better looking, but with the normal tile set, you have you know, like three letters and you have to sort of dig through all the different tiles. And it's not just about finding the right shape. You also have to find, uh, flip it around and look at the back and see, you know, is this the specific one that I need for this scenario? With the Nestor setup, you just need the first letter uh, to know which shape frame it is. And then you just fill in the tiles from there. And all of the, um, all the different shape tiles, I have this like folding accordion and it's all labeled a through N, I think it is. And um, all the different frames are in here. So when we look at a scenario and we need to set it up, we just look at the first letter of the, the tiles that are needed. And those are the frames that we need. We pull them out and then we can fill in the rest from there. It actually makes setup faster and easier in some ways. Um, filling each honeycomb in is a little bit of work, but it's, it's not much more. And again, the results, they, it looks so much better. It's a lot more fun to play with. Uh, so that's the framing. And next we'll, we'll talk about the different tiles. So the first tile is the stone tile. Um, that's this one here. So the stone tile, the way that I painted these was I just used cheap Walmart paint and um, I primed them black. I painted them a dark gray and then I used a dry brush technique. It's a very easy, simple technique. So if you want to do this yourself, you should know this isn't hard to do. Uh, you can get pretty good results. I'm not a professional painter, uh, but they came out pretty good. And um, you know, that, that, dry brushing gives it sort of a layer of um, light reflecting off of it and gives it some depth to it. So um, pretty easy to do the tile ones. I think the tile ones are really the most common ones we've seen. It feels like almost every scenario we do is made up of, of those stone tiles. The second one is wood. Uh, this I, I use really the same technique to paint them, except uh, these were primed black, they were painted brown, and then I, I used a couple different layers of brown with different um, different levels of strength with my dry brushing to give it, again, a little bit of a texture and a layer to them. Really happy with how the wood ones came out. Again, I just used cheap paints. They were very inexpensive. I got them from Walmart. This is something that anybody can do. And there's plenty of videos online. This is not gonna be a, uh, that you don't wanna learn how to paint from me. I'm not an expert with it, but there's plenty of videos online. If you wanna learn how to do these things, you can pick it up and you can do it yourself. Uh, the third tile is this lava tile. Uh, this is not, this is one of the least common tiles in the game. Uh, this one I actually learned a bit from when I first painted it. I painted it mostly yellow with sort of a red dry brush. Um, that doesn't really look like what lava really looks like. So I went back and I repainted them. I painted them more red with a black dry brush over the top to give it more of a, uh, a lava look. Uh, the fourth tile I have here, this is honestly probably my favorite. These are the water tiles. Again, they, uh, they're one of the lesser common tiles in the game, but I was really happy with how these came out. I painted these originally with sort of a light teal color, and then I went back in and it's, it's, um, you can't really see it in, in my video, but there's shallower areas in the tile. Uh, there's actually sort of a lip and then it concaves down. And in the shallower areas, I painted it a darker teal. There's some lily pads textured in the model. So I painted those green with some little white flowers on them. Um, then the last thing is Vallejo makes this product that I, I picked up. It's called Vallejo Water Texture. 
um, and it's an acrylic and you basically can fill in that indented portion of the tile with liquid and it it you know you leave it overnight and it dries and when it dries it looks like it's wet it looks like water um, so really happy with the way those came out uh, if you're going to do anything with water i would highly recommend using this uh, i also used it for the water fountain obstacle which i'll show that at some point in a later video when i cover my obstacles but um, it's great for anything with water in it the fourth tile is the grass tile so this one Really happy with how this one came out. Uh, I primed these ones brown. And, uh, and then I used some PVA glue mixed with water to sort of spray onto the tile. And then covered them in this Army Painter uh, grass green. It's, it's, it's made for sort of battlefield modeling. And uh, the PVA holds it on pretty well. I will say I do get a little concerned. I, uh, I, I went back over them with a matte clear coat spray paint afterwards to help hold it together. Um, but if you, you know, if you really like put some pressure onto it or scratch at it, you can peel the thing, the, uh, the grass off of it. So, you know, it, it's held up pretty well so far, but it is something I'm kind of keeping an eye on because I think if, if they had enough use, they could start to, uh, look more brown than grassy. Uh, but overall, I really like the look of it. I think it looks pretty natural and, uh, it fits with the theme fairly well. Uh, and then the last one is sort of, um, you know, it's sort of like the cave design. Uh, this one, I did the same technique I started with as the grass one, and I used this brown gravelly uh, surface again from Army Painter. And I really wasn't happy with the way it came out. The brown just kind of looked more like dirt than it did uh, maybe the inside of a cave. Uh, so I went back over them and I, I painted it black and then I dry brushed it gray. So it's the same color as the, um, you know, the other stone tiles, but um, but obviously with a bit more of a different texture to it. So, um, not, uh, to be honest, not crazy with how that one came out. It's probably my least favorite. Um, uh, but you know, it works pretty well and it separates the, uh, the look from the other one and, and does its job. Uh, so those are the, the, all the floor tiles that I've painted. And again, all of those I ordered from Etsy. Um, uh, those came in, I painted them up and we started using them right away. Um, once I did that and I knew I was going to be full on in, you know, I wasn't going to keep ordering everything from Etsy. I started to research 3D printers. Um, you know, there's a big debate between FDM printers and resin printers. So if you're looking at getting into this, I could tell you, I did my research and I made a decision. I went with an FDM printer. Uh, I got a Creality Ender 3 Pro and it worked pretty well. And all my obstacles were printed on the Ender 3. Uh, at the time, I it was living in my last house. I didn't ha really have a great place to set up a resin printer. Um, I, I have two young girls and, uh, you know, some of the concerns you read online about um, the, the toxicity of resin before it's cured. Got a little concerned about that, but I've actually since moved into a new house and I now have a resin printer. And I'll say if, if I had the right place set up to do it, I should have done a resin from the beginning, especially knowing that I was going to do a minis. The, uh, the quality is so much better, and I found that the, uh, the printer requires a lot less fine-tuning and sort of working through to get it dialed in to get good quality prints. Uh, but again, the Ender 3, it's, it's good for what it does. If you want an FDM printer, I did, again, all of my obstacles with it. So um, I'm, I'm going to show all of those things in, a, in another video. But uh, the, the first things that I started to print them uh, using the Ender 3 was my walls. And so here I have uh, some different wall styles. And they have wall kits that come in all different sizes. So you have single hex, double, three, four, five hex. Um, and then depending on how the alignment is, you'll have some that sort of have the jaggedy edge uh, or others that actually will go over and... Um, sort of hop over the the long side of uh of the the wall tile depending on which side the wall is going across you need different styles so printed out a whole ton of those and this was super easy to paint again so uh, primed them black gave them a gray paint and then a lighter gray uh dry brush and they came out really well they looked pretty natural and really happy with them uh, and then the last is the doors so uh, again the, the door setup it's from the same style as my walls really like these doors because they are two piece. So you can have the door closed, but then once you actually go through the door, you open it up you can remove this and leave the, uh, the base right, right on the map. And, um, you know, you can, it even has enough space there. You can put your mini in there to stand in there. 
Uh, and then the last, these are, uh, they're considered light and dark fog, but they really act as doorways as well, depending, depending on the scenario you're in. So these, I really designed the same way. Um, I actually went to, you know, a local craft store and I bought the stuffing that you would put in a stuffed animal. And I just took a very small amount of it and kind of teased it apart and, uh, and then glued that to just a 25 millimeter mini base and then spray painted one of them white. Uh, and then the other one I spray painted black and it kind of made it a little crunchy so it holds together a bit and those are my fogs So uh, so yeah, so those are all of my floor tiles my walls and my doors. Uh, I hope you like this uh, I will say if I were doing it all over again uh, I like nesters, but I'm a little jealous of the mag hex setup So if you're not uh, aware of what that is, I would go check it out if you're thinking of doing this first it seems to be a bit more work to set up, but uh, but I do like the look and style of it. And I think, you know, there's some storage cases that you can even print to, to keep all that together. So um, you can check those out as well. They they both work really well. Again, I'm, I'm not disappointed. I'm not going to redo everything that I did. Uh, but, you know, between the two, I, I do think the MagX is probably a little bit nicer for the, the way that I would like to do it. All right, so to wrap this up, uh, I'm going to show you just some footage of all of the tiles set up uh, with some other obstacles and standees, just so you could see what this would look like in an actual uh, campaign map if you were running a scenario with these tiles. This is just a series of tiles I threw together to show off some of it, but I uh, hope you enjoy. So as I mentioned, I've already 3D printed and painted all of my obstacles, and I'm about a third of the way done 3D printing and painting all of the enemy models. Those will replace all the enemy standees. Now, both of those are going to need, need to be video series. I think there's too much to cover in a single video for either one, but I'm curious which one you want to see first. So if you have an opinion on that, please leave a comment below. I'm going to use that to decide which videos I make first. Uh, if you like this video, please like it. If you like my content, please subscribe. It would go a long way to supporting the channel and helping it grow. I really appreciate all the support I've gotten so far. And uh, thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next one.